this is part two um, I cut it up so it wouldn't be so long uh, the next books are um, flat books and the first one I'm going to share with you is called Little Blue Boat. This would go with um, an ocean theme, ocean animals, uh, social activities, friendship is important in this book. Um, so, Little Blue Boat by Ginger Swift. And we could focus, like I said already, on the setting. The setting is the sea or the ocean. On the waves of the sea, something blue rocks and floats. What can it be? Could it be a car? No. You haven't seen any cars on the ocean, have you? Could it be an airplane? I hope not. Airplanes should be in the sky. Nope. It's a little blue boat. One thing I like about this flat book is it also has a picture on the flap. The little sh blue boat has friends in these waters. A dolphin, a seal, and two little otters. Deeper down in the sea where the water grows dark, swim a lobster and jellies and even a <gasps> what rhymes with dark that we could find in the ocean. Yep, that's it. A shark. The little blue boat goes out with the tide that leaves pools of water where... Hermit crab hides. Oh, look out there. Do you see two big tails? This little blue boat knows they belong to. What do you think rhymes with tails that we would find in the ocean? What do you think? Hmm? Whales, that's right. Blue whales. The little blue boat has friends that have feathers. How nice to have someone to sail with together. And so that's a flat book, Little Blue Ocean by Ginger Swift. Uh, my next flat book is Open the Barn Door. This Open the Barn Door is by Christopher Soltaro. It's a flat book, so it's a, definitely a toy book. Um, the setting is the farm. Uh, a lot of a lot of kids are really interested in farms and animals, and so that's the setting. Socially, the different animals that make up the farm, and how important they are to um, to each other and to making the farm run well. Um, we can also interact, as you can see, as we go along by making the sounds the different animals make. So, the first thing, who says moo? Oh, oh you think a cow? Sure enough, it's a cow. Who says oink? And because this has had the flap tore off of it, I cover it up with my hand. That's right, it's a pig. Um, this is one thing I have a problem with putting uh, flat books in libraries because I don't think they last very long but at home you kind of take good care of them and they're really good for teaching your kids to be gentle and take care of books but in the library not so much they usually get tore up pretty fast who says peep can you say peep 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 that's right it's a little chicken who says, nay, a pony? I would have probably said a horse. Who says, quack, 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 quack? 
That's right. It's ducklings. Who says meh? A goat. You know, goats will eat anything. They, he's got a, you can see he's got a sock in his mouth. They will eat anything, even tin cans. Who says woof woof? Now, you don't have to be on a farm to have this animal. Who says woof woof and lives in a house sometimes outside? That's right. He is a dog. Who says meow meow? That's right. It's a kitty. Who says cock a doodle doo? It is a rooster. A rooster is a male chicken. Who says hoo hoo? You think? You're right. It is an owl. And that is open the barn door. The last flat book I have is Little Green Frog. Little Green Frog is by Ginger Swift again. Um, we can use this in um, talking about habitats and so the setting is really important. Um, we can also talk to kids about um, friendship and how things get along. Different animals get along with other animals. Down by the pond, there's a moss-covered log, and on that log is a little green frog. The little green frog hears some chirping and quacking. It's Mama Duck, and her ducklings are hatching. Oh, what uh, just jumped with a splish, splash and a splish, then dived back down. A silvery fish. In the shades of the willow and little fawn naps and under the lilies, there's a turtle that snaps. A little green frog has an empty green tummy with his sticky pink tongue. <gasps> Zap! That fly will be yummy. Good night, seeing the crickets under the moon. But who isn't sleeping? A little raccoon. So that is The Little Green Frog by Ginger Swift. This is another counting book. I missed it when I was talking about counting, but I do want to talk about it because I really love it. It's all of the all of the animals are thumbprints and different parts of their body make the thumbprint. And if you could see really good, it's got the ridges of the thumbprint. Uh, this is one, two, three by uh, Sarah Powell. Uh, we could talk about characters, how all the animals are different. Uh, they have different traits, what they like. Bears like to um, eat and eat. And ladybugs like to laugh and giggle. And uh, so we could talk about personally, we could talk about what the kids like to do and uh, what makes them happy. You could do a thumbprint art project where they make a thumbprint and then make that part of their picture that shows something they like to do that makes them happy. So this is one, two, three. One cool chameleon resting in a tree, watching as the world go by, happy as can be. And you'll see it's got the number here, one, and then up here, it has the numeral one. 
I really like that. The flaps are on the top, which is different from most, but I like the fact that it shows them how the number is written as a numeral and how it's written as a word. And once again, um, the body of this chameleon is fingerprint. Two tiny turtles stop to say hello. They swim in the ocean and bob to and fro. And their heads are thumbprints. Three silly snails like to have fun. They slide on the mud and play in the sun. Yeah, their faces are thumbprints. For four cute caterpillars shuffle down the street. They have teeny tiny legs and many pairs of feet. So we're at four. We can see we're at four up here. And this is the word four. Five little lambs love to leap around. They jump up and down and run on grassy ground. Six lovely ladybugs scamper, crawl, and wriggle. They have spotted wings and love to laugh and giggle. And their whole bodies are the thumbprint. Seven fun-filled flamingos have feathers so fine. They splash in the lake and stand in line. Eight baby bears love to eat and eat. They snuffle with their noses and hunt for a treat. Nine chirpy chicks sing a happy song. They love being noisy and tweet all day long. Ten busy bumblebees whizzing on past. They make a buzzing sound and they fly so fast. And that is One, Two, Three by Sarah Powell. My next books are my favorite. However, I think that these kinds of books should just be in the home. I don't, they're too hard to sanitize, they're too hard to keep clean. And um, so for kids to have them at home, they're wonderful, but they're very good also for if you have a child on your lap and you're going to just share with that child. Uh, these are the best books. They're actually my favorite. Um, this is a touchy-feely book. It is Baby Animals um, by Dorling Kinsley, Kindersley. Um, character, you can talk about the different character, physical traits, how they're different, but they're, they're similar a lot of times. They, a lot of them have fur. Um, Socially, we could talk about what makes our skin different. Um, you know, some of our skin is dry, some of it's oily, some of it's got freckles, some of it, ha we all have a little bit of the, the hair, so we're kind of furry because we're animals. And uh, that is, let's get on to reading baby animals. Come and see the little baby animals. And I love how it tells you to treat the, the, the spot a little different. This one says, stroke the soft baby rabbit. So you're going to stroke it. So we talk about different types of touch. Scratch the rough skin on the baby elephant's ears. So we're going to scratch that skin. Feel the fluffy yellow duckling. So you're going to just feel it. Just feel it. Touch the smooth velvet calf. So I'm just going to touch it. I'm just going to touch it. See what it feels like. And this is my favorite. Tickle the furry baby gorilla. I just love that baby gorilla. So that is touch and feel baby animals. The last book I have to share with you is Mermaids. It is by Fiona Watt. It's a toy book because it's very touchy-feely, different textures. Um, we could talk about uh, the setting is the ocean once again. So it could go uh, with our little blue boat ocean and... Um, 
we could talk about that setting and, and how it's different from other settings. Uh, socially, the mermaids are very social creatures. They help everyone. Uh, they, For example, they help clean the shark's teeth. And uh, we could talk about how we help others, you know, and maybe even draw a picture of them helping and how they help maybe around the house or in the classroom. So this is mermaids. Mermaids love playing games, especially hide and seek in the coral and racing beautiful jellyfish. So you'll see the mermaid is very bumpy and scratchy, but the jellyfish, they're all different colors, but they're very slick and shiny. Mermaids take care of lost fish. The king of the sea usually knows which way they should go. They also look after friendly sharks and keep their teeth shiny clean. Mermaids love to ride on seashells pulled by shimmering seahorses. So the seahorse is very shimmery, but the mermaid, her scales are very scratchy and the sharks are almost like mirrors. They're so shiny. One special, on special days, mermaids visit the Mermaid Queen. They bring her starfish and shells as presents and listen to her stories of the ships and sailors and things that live in the sea. And this has lots of different textures. The starfish is, is scaly. The... Um, Mermaid, let's see, I was going to look here. The, sh the shell is, is bumpy, scratchy. The, um, you've got the, I'm not even sure what that is. But anyway, the queen's velvet purse is very smooth and soft. Mermaids spend lots of time hunting in shells for tiny, shiny pearls. So there's the pearl, and there's the shell, and telling each other how beautiful they are. So there's their shiny mirror. And that is Mermaids by Fiona Watt. And that was my experience with toy books. Um... I love toy books, and I'm looking forward to next week's assignment. Thank you for listening.